We shot an entire indie feature film on the Sony FX3. Now, I know, so did Gareth Edwards, but unlike him, we didn't have a budget of $80 million. We made it work with anywhere between four and $5,000. And if you're interested, if you're making your own feature or short film on the FX3 or the FX30, here's how we rigged our camera. This is a terrible transition. We shot the entire film on these mini Cine Primes by SLR Magic. Most of it on the 35mm with very few exceptions. There's like one shot in there shot on the 50mm to give it like this nice vintage beauty look. And there are a couple of shots that I had to take on the 25mm simply because we were so constrained in the spaces that we moved in. I was literally stuck in a toilet cubicle with our lead actor. 35mm is also great focal length to still have that frenetic handheld energy while at the same time not being so weirdly wide angle that you can't use it in close-ups. Also, it has a really nice focus ring and a seamless aperture. I mean, it is a mini Cena Prime. It's just like, it's, it's really tiny. Very early on in pre-production, I decided to shoot this film handheld, simply because I wanted to give the audience that in the moment feel. And I think that's a particularly nice fit for a horror mystery thriller. However, that brought up one challenge. You can't just go handheld and call it a day. So you need to rig out the camera. Now, as a cage, we use the FX3 cage that Tilter makes. This is the version one that they made. They now have a version two. One of the perks of this cage is the Arca Swiss base plate. So I figured, well, this is Arca Swiss and I'm looking for a base plate to mount the camera onto. Why not use this? Now, technically this is made for the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera, but I thought, I mean, it's like a Swiss. It should fit. And that is technically correct. The best kind of correct. However, the back lever doesn't quite close, which is a bit awkward. It is a tight fit, but like this just feels a bit weird. Also, there is one lever here that I just flat out had to remove because it just kept rattling around and the safety pin up front also needed to go. So with a few adjustments, you can make this work. It's nice because it's got like a very, very nice low profile and these Ari Rosette mounts, even though technically they're mini rosettes, but any Ari Rosette attachment will fit. Also room for the 50 millimeter rods. We went with carbon fiber rods made by Small Rig, not because I think that carbon fiber is much better than aluminum, but I mean, it just looks a lot nicer, and, you know. It's a rig, it's gotta look nice. This would also be a great fit for this shoulder pad that I made from like weird makeshift parts that I had lying around. Because what this allows us to do is use these dog bones with a small rig side handle. Slide the camera into this monstrosity of a shoulder rig. Now this is initially how I wanted to rig this. Um, this does make for quite a nice shoulder rig and it is fairly flexible and stable and still easy to use and operate. However, when at the same time directing and filming something, it doesn't quite allow me the liberty that I, I like to take. Communicating with the actors gets quite difficult. You can't just easily put this monstrosity down and an added downside is a lot of the shooting angles look really weird. I still think this is fairly usable as a shoulder rig using the base plate for the Blackmagic camera, a 50 millimeter bracket and like whatever shoulder pad you have lying around. The V-mount battery does add a nice bit of weight at the back so it feels fairly balanced and if I were to just use the camera on the shoulder I can absolutely see myself using this build. However, again, it's difficult to put the camera down, it's difficult to talk to people, and it, it just wasn't a good fit. But as you can tell by me dancing around here, it is quite fun to use and it does feel very professional. Maybe for a client shoot. I know there's a lot of people out there who really hate this audio top handle. I also, I must say, I'm not the biggest fan. It's not a, it's just not a great top handle, there are better alternatives. But if you need internal audio and we didn't have a sound recordist on set at all times, you just 
yeah, like you need to find a solution. This is a good enough solution. It records four channel 24 bit audio. Like, what more you need? Other than a good top handle. With the small rig attachments, it does become slightly more usable. I know Condor Blue and Tilter also make these. Like, it just feels a bit nicer. This plastic joint here, like, I feel like structurally that is the weakest point. If I could make a wish list for cages, like, I would love if there was like a metal bracket that would kind of connect the cage to the top handle, just make this thing a little less squeaky and, and wobbly. It's just, yeah, like it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. That's, that's all I'm saying. With our tiny shotgun mic and this DJI, and this DJI mic go, this is pretty much the camera rig or the base for it. As a follow focus, we use the small rig mini follow focus. There is a newer model that comes with a palm rest. However, I've never seen anyone actually use it as a palm rest. I'm kind of curious if that actually works. So if you have any experiences with that, do let me know in the comments below. I'm not entirely sure, like how, how would you use the, it feels a bit awkward, but yeah, I mean, you know. Now, of course, this entire thing also needs to be held nicely. So, this is where these small rig wooden side handles come into play. They are Ari Rosette mount and... I must say I like them, but I don't, I just, I don't love them. Number one, they came untreated. I needed to sand them down and oil them and like add wax to just like make them a bit nicer to hold. That's one thing. Also, you need to screw them in every time and then loosen and tighten every single time you want to adjust the angles. Just Tilta makes an advanced wooden side handle which comes with a thumb lever so you can flexibly adjust the angle without having to loosen and tighten the screw every single time. It's just, it's a lot nicer. Like these are fine, they're good, I have them. I think they're a bit expensive for what they are. Now again, one of the added benefits of using the Blackmagic base plate is it comes with a mini rosette, which means I can screw this in directly. And this is how we use the wooden side handle on the mini rosette mount. It is nice, like particularly for low angles. I can still use the, the wrist strap for like added safety, uh, depending on the shot. So yeah, this, this feels quite nice. But on the left side, because the follow focus blocks the mini rosette mount, I had to come up with a different solution. And I think it was quite a clever solution. Tilda makes this little piece here. This is an Ari Rosette 2 NATO rail adapter. They are technically designed to work with gimbals, but they also work on any old cage. So with the other left side small rig wooden side handle and the adapter, it's just a matter of slipping this onto the cage and voila, another point of contact. Technically I can hold it and even have a bit of play with the follow focus here. Um, but that's a, that's a different story. So follow focus is accessible. I do have that added point of contact. I can use both wooden side handles, again, depending on the angle. And yeah, that is for the most part the monstrosity that we shot our feature film on. But of course, what's missing? Unlimited power. As a power solution, we use this ZG Cine 99 watt hour V-mount battery and the small rig V-mount base plate simply satisfying click. And then with this on our base plate, cables aside, this is the rig that we shot our entire feature film on. Now, is this the perfect rig? No, no, absolutely not. No. But in the meantime, we have made a few adjustments. So if you're curious, I might make a follow up video and show you what we've learned and how we have optimized this little Frankenstein of a rig. And yes, I know technically it's the creature of the rig, but bear in mind, the real monster is the person who keeps pointing this out. Like, comment, and subscribe, I guess.